Hi there, I'm going to show you uh, two easy ways to get a GPU up and running on Google Cloud. Uh, you'll see there's a lot of blog posts, a lot of helpful people out there. I got a lot of help from uh, posts and videos out there. The one issue with the, those posts and videos is, over time, uh, they don't work anymore. There's so many different pieces of this puzzle, right? You have TensorFlow, NVIDIA, GCP, Keras, whatever tools you're using, and everyone has to work together. And if anything changes, suddenly the whole chain doesn't work anymore. So this video hopefully will, will, will help those people who are in this situation now. Maybe in three months this video will be obsolete too. But the first system I'm going to show you was uh, a colleague at work, Baolin, showed it to me, and it's super easy to do. So this hopefully will last a long time because you are relying on Jetware and their uh, you know, pre-made instances. So let me, let's go there first. Before, and then next I'll, look, I'll show you how to do one from scratch. So you need a Google Cloud account. There are some free credits available. Right now it's giving you $300 worth of free credits. The problem is in order to get uh, the GPU going, you need a paid account. That means you can still use your, your, your free credits, but you need to have a credit card there just in case you go over, right? Be careful because those are the GPUs are a lot more expensive. If you go over, they want to make sure uh, you get they have a way of charging you. So uh, Google Cloud account, with uh, uh, turn into a paid paid account, meaning you have to give it a credit card, and then it's super easy. Uh, oh, for one more thing first, you need to uh, turn on the, your quotas. You need to, to allow GPUs. By default, the accounts don't allow GPUs, so that's easy as well. You type in G, uh, you type in um, quota, you can spell. All quotas is fine. And it's going to bring you the quota. So this is how you, you know you turn on your permissions for what you want to use on 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 your machine, uh, on your, your you know on your Google Cloud account. To go to location, unselect location, and choose your specific location because they're they're they each location doesn't offer the same things. Uh, U.S. Central I know has both the K80s and the K100s. I'm going to turn them both on. Uh, but uh, if you want to use the, the Jetware, you just need the the, the 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 P100s. The second example I'll use the K80s because they're cheaper. And you say, uh, so you select these two for your region and you go edit quota. And we selected two quotas. Um, and you say you want one of the K80s, one of the P100. If you just want one or the other, choose what you want. For uh, jet, jet wear, you'll need the P100s. If you want to do from scratch, I'm using K80s because they're cheaper. And you say, you know, uh, I'm going to put a reason, learning about GPUs. Hit submit and it should be rapid. Uh, you know, maybe a few minutes if everything is, a, is in good standing. Though I've heard people it takes a day or two, so unfortunately I don't know what happens underneath you, but you cannot proceed until they reply and they say, yes, you are allowed to use them, and you can go to your quota page and you should see a 1 by the K80s and a 1 by the, the, the P100s, depending on which one you want to choose. After that, it's super easy, right? You go to, uh, you type in GPU, and look at the offerings by Jetware. They offer PyTorch, they offer TensorFlow. We're going to go with a TensorFlow notebook, and everything is in a notebook automatically. And they give you some background here. Uh, they're not cheap, right? They're saying the, the P100s uh, are about a total of uh, you know, almost $1,000 a month for continuing, continuing use. So um, let's say we say launch this, right? It'll tell you by the hour, uh, effective hourly rate is $1.29. So you want to make sure, right, it's right here. So you want to make sure when you use it, right, you just turn it on for, you know, three, four hours, however time you need, even overnight if you need it, and you turn it off because, you know, if you forget about it, you know, you're going to get charged a grand in a month. And if you're on a $300 credits, then, you know, you'll still be liable for that you know, $700 bill. So just keep that in mind, right? This is when you really want some some muscle uh, behind your modeling if you're going to do like some, some deep CNNs or whatnot. So, uh, but they allow you to, to kind of customize it too, right? So let's say you don't need uh, four C uh, eight CPUs, you could go down to four, and your price drops a bit, right? It went from 900 and some to 800 and some. And you can also, um, oh, it allows you to do the, the KAs, okay. So uh, uh, that should drop you too. So now we're at, well, it doesn't drop much from the P100s to the EK80s. I would have thought that it would have been. Um, uh, the boot disk, right, that's 220 gigs, is very small, I usually go with 100. And you have to allow uh, the ports. That's how you can do uh, Jupyter Notebooks uh, you know, from your local machine and Jupyter Notebook connecting to your instance instead of having to SSH. Super useful. You know, you accept and you deploy. It's going to take time, right, because it's got to install all this stuff. Um, and once it's up and running, uh, you'll, you'll, uh, you'll have a button and allow you to connect to your, uh, to your notebook. So let me, let me, let's, let, let's, let's, let's fire this one up and see how that works. Okay, so now we're back up. Um, everything is running. 
we have, it says, you know, um, we successfully have our notebook running. So you say, you know, you click open notebook, it's that simple. But there's a little password here. So copy the password, say open Jupyter Notebook, and paste the password. Okay, I'm not gonna save this for now. Um, let's, let's take it for a world, right? So uh, we're going to, um, uh, let's do a new notebook here, a new Python notebook, perfect. And let's make sure we have TensorFlow. Import TensorFlow as TF, right? Wait till you know uh, you confirm that it's up and running. So TensorFlow is up and running. Now we're going to confirm whether or not uh, our GPU works. So I'm going to go to TensorFlow Help Docs. It's super, you know. Um, I'll, I'll have the links in the notes to, to do this. But I'm just going to copy simple graph code, and we are saying we want to go to the CPU. So we'll first try the CPU just for um, the wrong tab here. All right, we'll confirm that. Yep, we're confirming it's running. And to test the CPU, you simply, you know, change this to a GPU and it works as well, right? So we have a GPU running. I mean, this was painless, right? Uh, basically, what's, what it's doing in the background is it's creating our instance, our virtual machine. Um, it's uh, installing, uh, you know, everything we need, Python, these things, TensorFlow. And it's installing um, the, the NVIDIA, CUDA, and CUDNN co uh, code bases, stuff that you'd have to do manually, right, to get your stuff up and running. Um, you still have to install things. I don't think, for example, I don't think Keras is there if you use Keras, which, you know, it's a great library. No, it's not, right? So you still have to pip install a few things, uh, you know, to, to, to get you up and running. But uh, it, it abstracts a huge pain of setting up, uh, you know, the, the GPU, the CUDAs, the CUDNs, all that stuff. So this is method one. Uh, now we're going to tackle method two. We're going to do it from scratch, right? So, so we're going to now create an instance from scratch. Uh, it's more steps, more involved, and because you're installing specific versions of things, you know there's potential for you to get tripped. Um, we're going to uh, uh, you know go go to your Google Cloud, right? Google Cloud account. Uh, click um, App Engine. Uh, no, Compute Engine. Sorry, Compute Engine, and click VM. And it's going to allow you to create your own instance in the cloud. So we're going to go create. So now we're going to, you know, give it a name. I'm going to call it Instance GPU. Uh, I'm going to go with the same region I was before, US Central, US Central. Uh, I'm going to change to uh, four CPUs, right? And I think you hit, yeah, you hit the, 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 the custom button here. And it gives you the GPU drop down. And we know, right, we have Tesla KEs in US Central because we, we, we checked that on the, the quota. Um, uh, your region, if your region doesn't have it, you know, find a region next to it that has it, you know, while you're allowing your quotas, while you're changing your quotas. We're going to change the boot disk to 16.04. Uh, uh, right now, that seems to be the one everybody is using. And um, we're going to change, I'm going to give myself 100 gigabytes, you know, just to be able to work. So let's see what I have. Um, so uh, let's double check, make sure we have everything we wanted. We have one GPU, we're on a K80, perfect. We have four CPUs, 15 gigs, that looks fine. We have a 100 gigabyte uh, on Ubuntu 16.4 uh, disk. I'm gonna give it full access to the cloud APIs if you wanna work with the cloud APIs. And I'm gonna open HTTP and HTTPS traffic uh, so you can you know, use Jupyter Notebooks if you want it, for example. And that's it. Then you create, you know, you hit the create button. Okay, so we created our instance and now when you go to your VM instances, you see it's here, right? To, to, to SSH in, it's super easy. Just click the SSH button. It's that simple, right? Green means it started. Click SSH, it's gonna open um, your terminal box, basically the SSHing automatically, taking care of all permissions for you. You don't have to worry about that. And once you're done with it, don't forget to stop it or delete it. I would recommend deleting it. Just start a new one next time, right? Because you will be charged and those are those are pretty expensive, okay? So uh, I'm gonna create, I'm gonna fire it up and uh, show you what we have to do next. Unfortunately, quite a few steps. So I clicked on the SSH button. I'm in, right? Here's my box. I can do an LS. Um, there is nothing. First thing I'm gonna do is sudo apt get update. That's gonna give me all, you know, uh, refresh uh, the available software um, that uh, that I can use. Always a good step, always a good first step to do. Next, we're gonna uh, install CUDA. So let me paste the CUDA code. All that code is uh, in, on the notes. To note it is we're doing a sudo su. We're gonna go as root to install it. And it's gonna install uh, the, the uh, NVIDIA software uh, for um, uh, for our GPU, we go yes, and I go yes, 
And you have to do, you have to be in sudo su, otherwise it's not going to work. So go through the notes, right? I have those notes step by step. Um, and hopefully by the time you read them, it still work, right? There's no guarantee. Uh, uh, if it doesn't work for you, do, do like I do, you know, go to the help docs or look for the newer blog, the, the newer, newer soul that decided to make a video or a blog post about it, right? Just that it's going to keep evolving. That's the way it is. Just, you know, uh, don't ping me, please. So this takes about um, 10 minutes. So I'll be back once it's, once it's uh, uh, fully uploaded. Okay, so we're all done. Took about 10 minutes. We got our GPU up and running. Um, now we can run the uh, NVIDIA SMI command. So which is, this will allow us to check that indeed uh, NVIDIA, everything is working. And basically uh, it tells you that we do indeed have Tesla KEDs installed. We're looking good and nothing is running of course we haven't run anything okay so we're looking pretty good so i have i started some notes while i was waiting so so far we did the uh sudo apt get we did s sudo su to get us in the, the root permission we installed all the software needed for the cuda uh, basically the gpu and nvidia that that that, that sets it up for uh, ubuntu 16.04 we just checked that the cpu is working now you need to this is a bit this is a bit a uh, painful process because it takes a little bit of time but you need to get uh, the CDCUDNN, the neural network file. So how does that? How did you? How do you do that? It's not that complicated. You go to um, you know uh, you go to the NVIDIA developer program. I have a link there. Uh, in it, it will ask you to join. Right when you just join, go ahead and join. It will take you to um, uh, you'll have to, once you have permission to get, you get to the member area, and the member area will allow you to. Um, uh, which one it is? It's right here. Member area will get you to the accelerated computing toolkit page. And from there, and I'll put the and the links are in the notes. Um, get the go to the deep neural network right uh, uh, link here. Let's click on it. And let me just add that to the notes. So uh, there. Uh, then you download C C C uh, the the C D U C U D N N, and it's going to allow you to do all the neural network stuff with um, uh, with uh, with TensorFlow. We are going to go with uh, the CUDA 9.0, and you need to choose the one for uh, the runtime library for 16.04, uh, right? Um, and let me make sure that's what I got. Uh, this is what I'm downloading right now. Let me double check with my notes. Uh, 7.14.18-1, that's the one, right? So I'll have the links a little bit clearer uh, in, the, in the page. You need to ask permission to be part of the um, of the NVIDIA developer program, right? That's not given automatically. I mean, it is given automatically, but you need to submit a form, and this has to take a day or two to get the answer back. So unfortunately, there's nothing to do there. You have to do it and wait. Once you have that file, it's a small file. You can easily upload it to um, if you go to your uh, you know to your SSH. There is an upload option. Just click upload, and you'll you'll be able to upload that file to your box. And that's what I'm going to do right now. So I'm a member, so I got the file, I uploaded it, and it's right here. It's in my, just did an LS, it's in here, right? We still have a, a super mission, pseudo super mission. And now I'm gonna install it. So, um, actually that's not the command, I apologize. Let me get the right command. It's pseudo dpkg-i, installing it. And there we're installing it, right? There's a few more things we need to install after this, such as TensorFlow, TensorFlow for GPU, and then we can run the same test we ran uh, with a notebook. Uh, so, so far, uh, boy, are those notebooks easier, right? Running it through Jetware. Uh, okay, so here we're going to uh, simply get the path, set the paths uh, so that it's sticky, so it knows where to find uh, the CUDA files and all that. We have a few uh, installs. Uh, we're gonna install a few necessary um, Python files, yes I do. We're unpacking it. Then we're gonna install TensorFlow with GPU support, right? That's important. There we, no, okay, it's going. And finally, we're gonna install IPython 3, right? IPython 3 is gonna allow us to, uh, to test uh, whether all this works. We'll run the same test we ran before. So we gotta wait till that's done. It looks like it's almost done. No need to put it on pause. Next, we're gonna install uh, IPython 3, just so we can test uh, whether this stuff works. OK, 
okay it runs let's go there my python 3 i hope you can all see it um, let's go import uh, tensorflow boom right we have it okay so now we're going to test the gpu so let me get that code where was it you know, the code will be in the notes of course well, I'll put this in the notes as well. I can put it right now. All right, nothing like editing live. And here we have it. Okay, here's a code here for CPUs. Let's make sure it works with the CPU. Oh, I didn't like the indent. That's fine. No, it's always giving me trouble with my cut and pasting in like Python. Okay, so let's just do this. I will. Let's paste this code. Okay, now we have we created our constants. I'm going to piecemeal this because it's not allowing me to paste it easily. There we go. So it looks like it's working fine with a CPU, right? Which we're not that interested in, right? Because that's no need to go through all this trouble. Let's change that, the CPU to a GPU now. Let me paste this back in. And paste this guy stuff to the rest of the test in. And it looks like CPU 0, GPU 0, we're looking good, right? It's running on a GPU. So there you have it, right? So obviously uh, going through Jetware, uh, much easier, right? Um, uh, and uh, uh, then doing it on, on, on you know, manually. Uh, you may have more flexibility with it manually. You may have some needs for production for background processes, though it looks like Jetware offers a production version. I'm not sure what it does. Uh, uh, we should dig in because it looks like it's interesting. But uh, this, you know, from, from going from uh, whenever something is broken, it's a nightmare, and then Jetware is super easy. And even the steps we just did there, as long as you got the CU DNN file from NVIDIA, being a member of NVIDIA, a developer, part of the developer network, you sign up, it's free, uh, that's not that bad easy, right? So here we showed you two different ways of getting your GPU up and running on Google Cloud. Thank you.